Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. You have joined the Brain 202, Gardening and Evolving Your Brain. And I am joined today by Patrick Thompson. Patrick will be answering any questions that you have in the GoToMeeting panel. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So I'm just finishing up a little gardening here on my own today, just a little bit of uh, trim work, cleaning up the mess on some of these old plants and, and uh, sort of getting some spring cleaning done. So excuse me, Patrick, while I put this away. And now it's time to start some gardening on our digital brain. And we refer to the term gardening when we're talking about cleaning up an existing brain because it's really much like tending to your garden. Um, everything that's important to you, getting rid of what you don't need anymore, cleaning up and making room for things that you do need, important data, information, categorizing, being able to access and find everything easily. The same process applies as what you do in your home garden as what you do to your brain garden. And that, of course, is the purpose of today's call. We're going to be taking some existing brains, some brains that have evolved over time and maybe gotten a little too cluttered in some areas. There's some brains that I'll be opening up where I've done a little bit of uh, too many, too much organizing. I've got too many clicks through and I'm finding that I don't need that many separate categories for some different projects that I'm working on. So I'm going to be cleaning up existing brains. So we're going to share with you today some more advanced features of the brain application. And if you're just getting started with the brain, we certainly don't want to intimidate you uh, or give you the impression that all of the features that I'm using today are day-to-day -day features that you would typically new use. Uh, these are key features that we, you would use periodically from time to time. Maybe there might be something that you see today uh, that you can start using on a more frequent basis. But if today's a little bit more advanced for you, please feel free to join one of our Brain 101 classes. Those are held every Friday. So you can sign up for a Brain 101, and that's where we really get back to the basics, creating thoughts, adding attachments, linking those thoughts to one another, and starting a new brain from scratch. Today, I'm going to uh, open up uh, some existing brains and share with you um, how we can actually start cleaning them up. So an evolved brain that has uh, over time just sort of grown a little bit out of control. The, the garden is a little bit messy and it's time to either do some trimming or do some organizing. So let's jump right in. The first example that I'm going to share with you today is uh, an area for my personal information. So this particular brain is actually a sample brain uh, that I've added a bit of content to, but you can actually download a cleaner version of this brain from our website, and we'll share that link with you at the uh, at the end of the call. But here's an area where you can see over in the work area of this particular brain, I've kept things pretty organized in this particular area. I focus on my work quite a bit, so I've got specifically everything related to customer service in one area, all of my operations and departments go into one area. I'm keeping my clients separate and connecting them when necessary to sales items, projects that I'm working on, working on marketing, ad campaigns, etc. So I'm pretty well organized in that area. But when it comes to my personal life in this particular brain, you know, I, I find a favorite web page, I get a document, I copy some components out of an email, and I just go in and I paste it in really, really quickly. And as you can see, things have gotten a little bit out of control. So I'm going to share with you today many different examples. And you can choose and decide which ones work best for you. There's many, many ways to organize the brain that you create. And it's really whatever best reflects your individual thinking. So I'm going to start by creating some simple subcategories and show you how easy it is to move thoughts into a particular area. Um, uh, to sort of clean that area up just a bit and move thoughts around and reorganize them in the brain. So you can see under my personal life, I've got a lot of information here about, um, of course, all of my banking information. Um, I've got gardening, all my hobbies and interests. I've got all my family. Uh, everyone in my family has their own individual thought. 
And let's start with that, for example. I'm going to create a new subcategory specifically for my family. So an individual thought simply called family. And as you can see, I started creating them all as jump thoughts here off of my personal life thought. Uh, but that has over time um, just become this, and depending on the size of the brain, you can see if I shrink the brain down a little bit, then I get this scrolling list that I have to sift through to find members of my family. So I've created this thought called family down below. And what I'm going to do is first I'm going to just right click on this thought for family and select to create a pin. Since we're focusing on this family thought, I've created a nice little shortcut um, up there at the top of the screen. That's just temporary. And that's so I can actually click and drag a thought link from, there's dad. I'll drag a link from his parent gate up to that family thought. And I can do this for each individual member of my family. So Lisa, linking her to family. Liz, up to family as well. I can also then come back and right click on a link between two thoughts to unlink them. So as soon as they're linked up to family, I unlink dad, I think Judith I already got, unlink. And you can see there if I hover over Lisa, uh, it shows Lisa's actually my sister. Lisa is linked to personal life. And you can see she also has another link now that is highlighted that goes directly to family. So I can unlink Lisa from family as well. So I can continue on with this list. There's not too many, so I'll finish them up really quickly and share with you another trick. So that goes pretty quickly, and then I can go back and unlink from its original location. So now when I go to the family thought, boy, this helps a lot just for starters, just to get rid of that massive clutter of thoughts over there uh, that was sort of clogging up the screen. Now I've got this nice little thought called family, and there are all my family members. And each one of those thoughts down in the notes below will have their uh, contact information, their Twitter feed, their Facebook link, etc. So I've got easy access to all the different members' contact information. And of course, there's other links to everything that they're, they're linked to elsewhere in my brain. And also, I think I would rather have this family thought still over here as a jump thought. So I've got all my personal hobbies and interests down below. I keep my family linked as a jump thought to the personal life thought. And again, that's really your choice when you decide to link something as a jump thought versus as a child thought. You'll see I'll be shifting that type of uh, those types of relationships around quite a bit. But it's important to point that out once again, that it can be easily done. Whoops, I clicked on the gate. I can simply click and drag. If I want family to be parent thought, I move it up above. Jump thought, I move it over to the left of the current active thought. Now let's do the same for the categories down below. Um, I've got a lot of information on finance. And this becomes really easy when I'm moving a child thought underneath a child of another thought. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'll create an area for finance, and I'll go to that thought. And now all of the other child thoughts of personal life are appearing as sibling thoughts over on the left. And it becomes really, really easy. Now I'm not moving a jump thought down to a sub-level or a sub-directory of a child thought. I can take banking and just simply click and drag that below finance, and it relinks itself from its original location now to a child thought of finance. Uh, so there's bonds, and I can simply scroll through my list here. Healthy living, insurance goes there. Um, I'll put medical under finance. It might fall under health and fitness. I'll create a thought for that as well. I can put it under both locations. Real estate, retirement planning. So I've got quite a bit and retirement savings account. Bring that underneath finance as well. And so already we're starting to clean up. We're not seeing a big change quite yet. I'm going to create an area for my hobbies. And I'm going to share a trick with you. You can also use a semicolon when you're creating multiple thoughts at one time. Uh, hopefully you're aware of that trick, but if you are just getting started with the brain, the semicolon is a great time saver. So I'm going to create an area for my hobbies, uh, food, and fitness. And an area for my pets. And an area for travel. So, and if I think of anything else later, I can come back and add that at any time. 
So I'll start with food and fitness. And there's my fitness plan, fitness goals, diet and exercise. I've got healthy living links and healthy eating links. And once again, I'm simply clicking and dragging directly over from the sibling thought area to the child thought area. Additionally, I'm going to share another trick with you now. You can actually start adding thoughts to a selection box. So you see a lot of drag and drop or simply drag a link and then go back and right click and unlink. Those are options for you. And that's really great for individual thoughts. Uh, so art and culture, for instance. If I don't see what I'm looking to, it's probably over there if I would look, but I'm not going to look. I just know art and culture, that link needs to fall under hobbies. So I click and drag a link and I start typing in hobbies. And there it is in my existing thought list. So the brain will already show you if it has an existing thought that matches whatever it is you're typing in. So I'm going to link to this existing thought, hobbies, and unlink art and culture from personal life. So that's another option for you as well. But we can also add thoughts to the selection box so that in mass we can grab a group of thoughts and link them to one area, unlink them from another area. There's many different attributes. So let's talk about that for just a bit. Um, I see a lot of my pet thoughts appearing here in front of me. So I'm going to click on control and click on pet sitter. Now I'm on a PC today, so this is done with a control click. If you're using a Mac, you would simply command click to populate the selection box. So I'm going to continue control clicking on a few thoughts. There's pets and vets I also have. So I control click. Now, if I want to check out a particular area, I can click and go into it without the control to go back to just regular navigation. Nothing under hobbies. I come back up. I see animal adoption. That goes under pets. So I control click. So control clicking, adding items to the selection box. And now I can navigate to my pets thought. Oh, I added pets actually into my control uh, click. I want to remove this from the list. So I can control click to remove pets because that's where all of my pet information is going to go. And I can do that down here in the brain too. So it's like a toggle switch. Control click to add it in. And if I don't want it, control click once again to take it out. Now I can go to my pet's thought and I'll simply right click over in the selection box. And let's take a minute just to look at all those different options that you have. Um, this is really uh, a, a nice little section of the more advanced features of the brain application. And I'm going to be coming into this uh, selection box quite a bit today. Uh, for now, I am simply going to scroll all the way to the bottom, link my selected thoughts as children of pets. So all three of those thoughts will be instantly linked as a child thought to pet. Now, the links that they had before have not been removed. It didn't edit the link, um, the existing links in any way. Those are still there. For that, I can go back to personal life. I right click and in my selection box, just these three thoughts, I can unlink those from the current active thought. So pets, those three thoughts have quickly been moved from personal life over into the, uh, the pets area. So let's go ahead now and clear the selection box. And now I'm going to grab all of my hobbies. So home renovations, gardening, uh, that's going to go under travel, music, house repairs, photography, restaurants, that should go under food. So we'll come back to that in just a minute. I see a few more billing items, technology and sports. Those are hobbies. And what I'm reading now. I can actually move that under, uh, I've got another area for reading. So I've made a selection of some really random thoughts in this area. And I just want to share with you that you can go either direction. As long as you keep the selection box open, I can unlink these ahead of time. I'm not deleting the thought. I'm just removing the link. So I unlink those from the current active thought, personal life. Be sure not to close that selection box. I want to keep those thoughts selected. And I navigate over to my hobbies thought and right click and oops, right click in the selection box rather and select to link selection as children. So I've grabbed quite a nice little chunk, about eight to 10 thoughts and move them from one area to another. So things are speeding along quite quickly. I saw a couple of other travel items 
Um, also, stocks and expenses and bills, those should come under finance. So I can go back and modify. And this is really where the gardening comes in. From time to time, I'll notice something in my brain that's just not quite right. I dragged and dropped a thought to the wrong area, or I started building out a particular area of my brain and realized it should go somewhere else. Here, I'm cleaning up the brain, and I missed a few thoughts under finance. So I come back at any time, and I'll move over upcoming expenses, as well as my stock information underneath finance. And another trick that I want to share with you is you can also control click or command click on an actual gate to select all the thoughts in a particular area. So if you know you want an entire branch or area of thoughts moved to a different section of the brain, that can be done as well. And then I can simply go back and clean things up. So I'm populating now my travel area, and so I don't want restaurants, pets. I'm control clicking to remove these out of the selection box. Food and fitness, travel is the thought I'm going to link them to, and move out hobbies and move out finance. So Really quickly, I've just gone through in a list format and found the thoughts that I want to move underneath travel. And I'll right click in the selection box to link as children, back to personal life, right click and select to unlink them from personal life. And I think that has really, really cleaned up this area of the brain. If you remember, uh, before I started, I had maybe 20, 30 uh, or more thoughts. I had to scroll through this area to find a particular file that was important to me or a particular uh, thought that I wanted to get to. Maybe I wanted to pull up a couple of notes. I'm taking on a music class that I've signed up for. Well, now I can go directly into hobbies. I have a much neater and smaller area to sift through. There's my music thought. I can go on, add my content into that area in my brain. So it'll save me a lot of time in the future, and I'll very, very um, uh, easily still be able to find all of that content in my brain. And additionally, I can link areas or find thoughts that should be linked to multiple different areas within my brain as well. Um, so let's say I go into food and fitness, and I've got an area for my recipes. And notice that under my recipes, I've got subcategories for dad's recipes, Laura's recipes, mom's recipes. Uh, my son, August, enjoys cooking as well. So I want to bring an August link over here to my recipes. Maybe I just want to create a jump thought. He's cooking with me, and we're coming into this area of the brain to pull up an open recipe from time to time. So I'm going to link my recipes over to my son, August. So notice I just type in a single letter, and I'm presented Again, with all thoughts that start with that content. So this, is, again, is the brain's way of reducing clutter and duplication. I can scroll down. There's August. And I simply link those two existing thoughts. So August falls under family, and he's also linked up to my recipes thought. A couple of different ways to getting into that recipe area of the brain. And again, if you're wondering, you notice there's not a lot of content in this particular brain. This is a sample brain, and what you're seeing now is a more accurate depiction of what you'll download if you download this sample brain to start attaching your own content um, or just using the brain as sort of a sandbox to play around with. This particular brain is available for you. We'll send you that link at the, uh, at the end of the demo today. So I've cleaned that up area up nicely. And I'm going to add one more component. This is a, a typically a very simple feature within the brain application but one that I always like to uh, point out, particularly in our brain 202s. Sometimes it's not just the act of cleaning up the brain, it's visual cues or ways of navigating to a particular area that's, uh, that's very important to you. And sometimes that can be done by simply adding a thought icon. Notice I've got a nice little house for my personal life, and then there's an office building for my work life. So let's say for travel, I'm really focused on doing some summer travel. I come into this area quite a bit. It's a small, simple change, but one that you'll see over time makes a big impact. I'm going to click on this travel thought, and I'm going to open up my tool tabs down below. Now I can do this by right-clicking on the thought, but I also want to show you there's different ways to access this particular feature of adding 
thought icons, the individual thoughts. So for the travel thought, on the travel, or excuse me, on the thought tab down below is where you can see all the attributes for an individual thought. Any file attachments that you've brought into your brain will be available here. Your notes, obviously, will always be accessible. But on an individual thought, I can click on the color wheel for that thought to make it stand out. So let's say I want my travel to be sort of a nice purple color. And I can click on this little plus sign. And from the plus sign, you see next to the word travel for the thought name is the icon library. So this is the brain's built-in icon library. I can scroll through the list or filter my list by category. So let's say I want to scroll down to transportation and select a picture of an airplane. So I just select that nice little airplane there. I've got a few different airplanes to choose from. I like that one a little better. And again, a small, simple change, but particularly in a business environment, this really helps me identify because I have my own system for identifying a contract versus an invoice or a, uh, a billing document or something like that. So I've got all of my own custom icons that make sense to me, and I assign those to thoughts uh, from time to time just to give it further identification, further classification to really hone in on the specific information I'm looking for. Obviously, in this environment, not too hard just to see the word travel, but it's really nice just to have that nice little cute icon. It'll pop out at me and I'll be able to go directly to that thought. Snorkeling has a little picture of a fish, uh, tropical vacations, a palm tree. I do this from time to time in my thoughts just to visually identify them. And I do feel that it, it helps you navigate quicker through an existing brain uh, by having the, those visual cues for important contracts, contacts or colleagues that you work with, et cetera. So speaking of working in a business environment, I'm now going to change over and jump into my eSolutions brain. So this is a sample business brain where I'm keeping track of all my different clients. I've got notes and information about meetings that I'm working on. All of my projects are being managed and maintained from this particular brain. And once again, I've got one particular area of the brain. If I go down into my marketing campaigns, for Time Warner, and under 2017, I'm working on this reach out ad campaign for Time Warner. Now, what I'd like to do is share with you another method, another example, and you can choose which ones work best for you for classifying your information and adding greater context. So this is a, an active project that I'm working on with this particular client. It's an ad campaign, and you can see I've got all kinds of presentations down below. I've got meeting notes, I have documents and web pages. So a lot of content for a lot of different reasons. And this is going to continue to grow and grow over time. Now, once again, yes, I could create a thought called meeting notes and attach all my meeting notes as, as a sub thought or a child thought underneath meeting notes. But that just gives another layer, another layer. I'm already very deep into my brain. If I go all the way back to the top, eSolutions Consulting, you can see I'm clicking down into my clients, and then by service level, I'll go into my gold service level client to get to Time Warner. You can see I could have also clicked down through time, clients by um, uh, industry service, communications, media entertainment, etc. So many different ways to get to this particular thought. But then I go into my meeting campaigns. I've got them organized by year, and there's my reach out ad campaign. So it took me a few clicks to get there and to add more clicks on further down. I feel like that would be adding a little bit of clutter in this scenario. I want all my information right here in front of me, but there's a better way to visualize that content. And that is by assigning a thought type. You'll notice that the people that I have associated over here as jump thoughts, um, they've got these little icons associated with them as well. So I did a custom icon on a thought just a moment ago. And those can be set up the same way here. But in this scenario, all thoughts of a particular type will inherit the same visual icon, the same visual cue. So let's just start off with all of our documents. You know, I've got a, basically a, a specs for all of um, the different ad campaigns that I'm working on. So there's the timeline, there's a checklist, there's, there's certain documents to go along with every project that I work on. 
So let's create a new thought type. I can right click on a thought and go to thought type. And if specs was already there, I can just select it and assign that thought as a spec. Um, or I could call that uh, life cycle document or call it whatever I want. In this case, I like the term spec sheets or specs. So I select to create a new thought type. So this takes me to the thought type thought. I know that's a, actually a, a mouthful, but notice that this particular thought has this little dotted line around it. That's telling me that that is a thought type. So I can assign this thought type to different thoughts in different areas of my brain. And of course, down here on the thought tool tab, all the information about this thought, it's telling me this is a thought type. So I want all of my spec thought types to be yellow, for example. And once again, we'll select an icon. So I'll go into my business area. And so all my spec sheets will have this nice little, uh, I can do a pencil, but I think of a spec typically as sort of a legal document. So I'm going to select this nice little yellow piece of paper to go along with the yellow text. So all thoughts that are specs will inherit that, those attributes, the yellow text with the little yellow piece of paper. Now notice that the thought type specs, it sort of disappeared from view as soon as I clicked away. So thought types are not typically visualized in the brain. If you want to get to a thought type, maybe I want to change this purple or change the icon. I can go down to this tab for my thought types list and go directly to any thought type to modify it and get it in the future. And it's a universal change. So if I change the icon here, every thought that is a spec sheet or a spec in my brain will be automatically modified. So let's go ahead and assign more of these. So I've got my checklist. Now I'm gonna go back to my control clicking once again. Meeting notes, I'll keep those uh, separate. This March 2016 is a document. There's a contract, product comparisons. So those are my spec sheets for this particular project. And I'm gonna right click over in the selection box. And now I can go down and in mass to all these, it's just four thoughts at this point. But for these four thoughts, I am going to change their thought type to be a spec. And I can close my selection box. Now notice that it grouped those thoughts together. So it automatically cleans up the display for you. Now, if you're not seeing it that way, if you're setting up thought types and your thought types are scattered around in large groups of children, it's just a, due to an ordering preference that you have set up. So if I right click on the background in the brain, I can go to arrange thoughts by, and I like to arrange my thoughts by thought type because I use this feature quite, uh, quite a bit but I can switch back to arrange thoughts by thought name. So it's alphabetical in this cluster of thoughts, but a spec sheet still has its identification and visual identity associated with it. And of course, when I mouse over that thought, it shows me that's a spec thought type and I've got the nice little visual icon. So let's go back, arrange thoughts by thought type, and let's select our next thought type. Here's our meeting notes. So once again, I am going to right click on meeting notes and set up a new thought type. That's how I like to set up a thought, new thought type. You can set up new thought types on the thought type tool tab below. We'll call these meeting notes, or let's just abbreviate it. We'll just call it notes. So all of my notes, I'll go down to my thought type to modify the color for all of my notes. So let's say all of my notes will be sort of a, sort of a grayed out color and I'll give them an icon as well. Again, in the business category, uh, there's many different categories. I'll let you play around and play with all of those. I'm in the business brain, so I'll focus on the business area. That's where I wanna use my little pencil with notepad. That looks great. And once again, I can go back into this area of my brain, my reach out ad campaign, and I can right click on thoughts to change their thought type. I'll change that to a meeting note as well, or a note, and right click on March 2016 meeting notes, thought type notes. So I think I have all of my meeting notes. I have two more categories, so let's go through those really quickly. Um, these are some different web pages that I have. So if I click on this attachment, the icon there you can see was black, so it wasn't showing up very well for that thought. But this is just a clothing website it's a great way of sort of demoing how products are presented in their website. I think the client is really going to like this, so I'm going to be sharing 
some of these different websites with them. So I categorize these as research. Uh, so once again, I'm just going to control click on all of my research. These are web pages. And I'll right click over in the selection box and go down to set the thought type. And the research thought type does not exist yet. So new type, research. And I do want an icon associated. This time I'll right click on the research thought type and select to select a thought icon. So for research, go down into business and there's a magnifying glass. Perfect. So I select my icon and notice, I'll go ahead and keep that and close this window. If I ever want to go back and modify or change, once again, how a thought shows up, I can right click and on the thought type itself and I'll go back to selecting a thought icon and back into, this time I'll go into, let's say, objects. So for research, I'll use some binoculars. But notice it changed to binoculars on all of those individual thought types. So all of those particular thoughts have those uh, binoculars associated with it. So it's a mass change, you change the thought type, all thoughts of that type will automatically be changed for you. Um, and this cube gray, that's a graphic actually that I'm going to be using, that is research as well. So once again, you can go back at a later date and modify how those thoughts uh, appear or what category they fall into. Um, just like these, for example, I'll make the future of e-solutions and the winning edge. I'll make those research thought types research. But at a later date, I decide, you know what, I was researching how to put together a presentation for the company, and I want to change that category. So you can also go back and change a thought from one thought type to another. So if you think about that, you can actually set up thought types as a business process, phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, so I'm going to change those research items, the winning edge is going to be my thought type. I don't think I have research. I thought that I did, so I'll select a new one. Uh, not research, that's going to be a presentation. And for presentation, I'll actually grab an image off the web. So I'm going to use the Brains search web feature. So I click on F4 and search the web for presentation. And maybe I just even want this very technical presentation um, right there out of um, Wikipedia probably. But let's say I want to actually use that as my image, my graphic. Now, of course, I can go over to images and find an image online. Maybe I want this little guy standing at a podium. Uh, but I don't want the little content that appears down below or I don't want to see his feet in the image. I'm going to use another feature of the brain. So let's go back and open up the brain. And this time, to grab the icon for this thought, I'll right click. And instead of choosing the option for select thought icon, I'll choose capture thought icon. So what has happened is the brain has actually minimized. And now I was, I'm presented with whatever was open behind the brain. And I can use my crosshairs that you see here to capture an image. So if you are familiar with Snagit, um, the process is, is really the same. You just drag a box right there on the brain, or excuse me, on the screen, and whatever is inside that, that area that you've framed becomes your image for that thought. So now all thoughts that are presentations will show up, and the future of e-solutions. I'm going to change that thought type from research to presentation. So I've gone in and changed a couple and, and let's give that a color as well. So thought types, presentation. I want all of my presentations to show up as, uh, we'll say this nice light orange, just to make them stand out a little bit. So there you have it. We've not gone in and created new subcategories um, and added an additional click down through our brain we've actually gone in and just organized a large cluster of thoughts in a very manageable way. Everything that's there is still important, 
And maybe from time to time, I want to minimize my tool tabs down below and really sort of get the look at the land of, of this particular um, ad campaign that I am working on and see all of the content. So in that scenario, a subcategory doesn't work for me. Yes, I could go into expanded view and expand multiple generations of thoughts at one time, but this is what works for me for my business environments. I can now go and apply all of these rules, uh, all of these thought types to other areas of my brain. So I can go over into 2016. There's my see the world. I'm just getting, uh, maybe I deleted all that content. This again is a sample brain. So let's say I create a new meeting note for March 2016. See the world. So that's a meeting note. And actually as I'm creating the thought, I can go and assign a thought type. You saw earlier, I can do it after the thoughts already been created, but I can do it as I'm creating thoughts as well. So this is going to be a meaning note. So I assign that thought type. It inherits the attributes for uh, uh, for all of my note thought types. Now the advantage to setting up, or I should say another advantage to setting up thought types, not only can you organize and visually identify your content, I am going to open the tool tabs once again, and now jump into the reports. And from reports, I'll just refresh this brain. Again, this is a sample brain. It's fairly large. There's over a thousand thoughts in this particular brain. But let's say my marketing director walks into my office or a couple of colleagues that are working on some projects with me and they say, all right, we wanna look back through all of the different presentations we have in the brain or we wanna review all the recent customer meeting notes. So rather than going from customer to come up, customer to customer within my brain and find meeting notes for their projects that we were working on, by setting up these thought types, I can filter my report and say, all right, instead of showing me just a long scrolling list of over a thousand thoughts that I can still click on to go directly to these thoughts, I can also say, all right, show me just of my thoughts that are thought typed meeting note or note as I called it. And so I just created this thought type, so there's not that many yet, but you can see I can get to them very, very quickly and easily by filtering out that report and going directly to all those individual thoughts. You can also run searches within your brain or, or filter out a report. Let's say I want to, classify all recently modified data. I'm going through uh, some type of review of all of my work and I wanna create a thought tag. So a thought tag is very similar to a thought type in that it's an attribute, it's a classification that that thought fits into. The key difference between tags and types is a thought can only fall under one thought type. So this is a meeting note, but this meeting note they have different attributes. Maybe there's important information, so I wanna mark it as urgent. Something in that meeting note, if I launch that file, is a very urgent and needs to be attended to. Um, also, it involves my colleague, Paul, so I'll check that box as well. Now, you can turn on types, or excuse me, you can turn on tags to be visualized in the Plex up above. If I go into my preferences, and on the Brain tab, I'll uncheck this option, and notice that it appears there in the Plex. This thought is urgent and attention Paul. So you can turn that on and off. I like to have it uh, kept off. And whenever I wanna review a thought of a particular tag, I'll go to the tag thought itself here from the tag tool tab or run a report. So let's say this also happens in Chicago. So meeting notes about what's gonna happen for this project in Chicago. It pertains to Paul and it's also urgent that I take care of this right away. Now I can visit all of my urgent thoughts at any time. So I run or I quickly filter out all thoughts that are urgent and, and I can identify them. So I've got other radio campaigns I'm working on, databases that I'm rebuilding, customers or clients that I've been calling. What is it that's so important about that particular client? Well, that information would probably be down on the notes, the action items that I'm uh, pertaining to or, or interested in will take place on the notes. But it's another way of adding a classification to your thoughts. So if you don't use thought types and tags, I highly recommend that you start experimenting with them 
to see the real advantage. And the first thought tag that I created when thought tags became available in the brain was an urgent thought tag. So I could go through this brain, massive brain that I have of my own, and tag everything that's urgent. Sometimes it's calling a customer, as you could see. Sometimes it's working on a project. Sometimes it's even calling uh, you know, my mom for her birthday so that I don't forget. So I mark that as the day is getting closer as an urgent action item. So those types of thoughts would never typically be linked to one another, my mom thought, as well as my mail res database thought. I have nothing in common except for the fact it's urgent that there's an action item that, uh, that takes place, a phone call or a rebuild or what have you. So those are the thought tags that you can create as well. I sort of uh, don't have enough time to, uh, to go into a lot of detail about thought types and tags. But I do, uh, um, I do advise you to experiment with them. Maybe I'll go ahead and set one up really, really quickly. Let's say I run a report of all thoughts that have been modified uh, within the past week. So here again, we have a list of random thoughts. There's uh, projects that I'm working on. There's web pages that I'm researching. There's databases, there's customers, just a, a variety, a wide variety of different types of thoughts in this report. I'm going to add everything in the report that I just filtered out. In this case, it's all thoughts modified between March 5th and today. I could run a report to find all thoughts that have been created in a certain amount of time or all thoughts that have a Excel spreadsheet that has been modified in a certain time range. So all different kinds of filtering that you can do there in the reports. But with this sort of motley crew of, of report results, I'm going to go up to Edit and select to add report results to selection. And I'm going to create a new thought tag called Review. So I've created that Review tag. Let's see it in the list. There it is. So there's zero thoughts currently marked as review. All of these thoughts that have recently been modified, let's say I want to double check my work at the end of the week or whatever the case may be, all thoughts recently modified. Next week, I'm going to go through and click through them one by one to review them to make sure everything I did this week is accurate. So I right click over my selection box and I'm going to set the tag on all of these thoughts to review. So now when I go to my review tag, you can see there's all of those search results that are the uh, report results. They now fall under the review thought tag, and I can go through and hit them one by one. They still have the same thought type, but I can assign new thought tags to them or keep some notes down below and review them one by one. When they no longer need to be reviewed, I simply unlink them from the review tag, or you can see that just fell down, review just fell down to uh, oh, did I unlink that? I'm not sure if I did. I unlinked it from its parent thought, sorry. Review, there I can unlink, reach out Time Warner from review. Or I can click on the thought, right click, is this tagged as review? No, I just completed it. So there are many ways to unlink or untag a thought as well. One last component that I wanted to uh, share with you before I start talking about how we can merge and segment brains into larger and smaller brains, is that from time to time when you're gardening in your brain, it's not just necessarily cleaning up large clusters of thoughts. Maybe you've over-categorized, and I do that from time to time. And I just actually noticed it here in this particular brain. Um, you know, under 2016, I only have one active project for this particular client. 2017, I've got two. This one just started, so all together now, I'll right-click like that, a new active project. And there's only three, there's really no reason why they should be buried two or three generations uh, down beneath Time Warner. So I'm gonna make Time Warner a pin really quickly, right click and create a pin. And see the world is going to be linked directly to Time Warner. Like under 2017, all together now, up to Time Warner and my reach out ad campaign, up to Time Warner. So I have no use for this 2017 thought, the 2016 thought, and even the marketing campaign's placeholder. 
So there's different ways that you can remove or delete thoughts within a brain. Um, I can right click and notice this is the default. If you right click on a thought, you'll have the option to forget. When you forget a thought, the thought is actually still there. So I just forgot 2017. But if I go up to options, I can show forgotten thoughts. I've got quite a few in this particular brain, but there's that 2017. And notice it's still there. It's just grayed out right now. Forgetting a thought is really like putting a thought into the brain's recycle bin. The content is still there. Uh, any attachments, the notes are still there. It hasn't been completely deleted yet, just forgotten. So we can go to our forgotten thought list and one by one I can review these or I can select one and select to permanently delete that particular thought. So 2017 has been deleted. There's a shortcut. I can hold down the shift key, right click, and I'll go from forget directly to delete. You can change your preferences. If you go up to on a PC, it's options and then preferences. On a Mac, you would go to the brain and then preferences. And you can change on a right click to go from uh, forget directly to delete if you know you always want to delete thoughts. I like it there as a safety net. You can see in, even in this sample brain from time to time, I don't permanently delete a thought. I just forget it because I may want to bring it back at some time. In this case, I do want to permanently delete. So I'm going to use a few tricks at one time. I'm going to control click 2016 and marketing campaigns. So I've added those to the selection box. And now I'll use that shortcut. I'll hold down the shift key to go from forget directly to delete. So I'm going to delete those two thoughts. And because I linked them up earlier, those three ad campaigns now fall directly underneath Time Warner. I don't have all those extra tiers or extra click-throughs, placeholders anymore, because I've simply decided that I don't need them. So that concludes all of the different ways that we can garden individual brains. From time to time, this is sort of taking it to the brain 303, from time to time you need to create an entirely new brain or segment a very large brain into smaller topic-specific brains. And those are always options for you as well. You may have noticed earlier I was getting around from my different brains by clicking on these little brain buttons. So I can click on a brain button to go directly to a specific brain uh, that I have uh, that I've created, there I clicked back to E Solutions really quickly, and um, and I like to have smaller topic specific brains. And from time to time, I actually need to take a an entire section of a brain, segment it into a smaller section so I can share it with a colleague or share it on a demo. Let's say today I wanted to share this Time Warner area of my brain. But I didn't want any of the other thoughts on the screen. I'd want to really bring the focus into this particular customer. Or let's say we get a new uh, employee at eSolutions Consulting, and we want to put them in charge of Time Warner. So we're going to give them this section of the brain to create on their own and continue developing. And I'm going to remove it from my brain. So I'm going to control click on Time Warner. Once again, going over to the selection box. Now. I right click in the selection box and I'm actually going to select to crawl and modify the selection. So I'm actually going to crawl my brain. In this case, I'm just simply going down, child word. So you can go child word, parent word, jump word, so all different directions within the brain. I'm going straight down, so all child thoughts for, we'll say, eight generations away, I'm going to add into the selection box. So as you can see, there are 33 thoughts that I've just added into my selection box. So another way of populating that selection box. And now I can right click and copy those selected thoughts. There's actually many features I can do. I can copy them as a text outline if I'm looking to turn in a, a document or a thesis paper and I want an outline of uh, content I've created in the brain. Um, I can delete these, forget these thoughts as we've seen earlier. Now I'm simply going to copy the selected thoughts and I can delete them now if I want. I will keep them in this brain. But I'll create a new brain for my new employee. And I will not select from one of the brain's pre-built templates that you can play around with there as well. Starting with a blank slate. So just a, a brain called new employee. And I'll right click on the background and paste those thoughts. 
So yes, I want to confirm that I want that done. So all of those thoughts, their thought types, their tags, uh, notes, file attachments, everything associated, even the colors you can see and the, uh, the tags are showing up. But let's go into my reach out ad campaign, everything that I created there today, all available. So I can go directly to a specific thought. And this, again, it's tagged in Chicago. It's now I added review. You saw I did that earlier. 15 of those review thoughts actually made it into this brain. So I can start you know, going through and grooming this particular smaller subsection of the brain or zip it up, share it with my colleague and even sync it to the cloud. So I can share this brain. Maybe I want to share this with my client, Time Warner. Now notice it picked up the colors of the individual thoughts. And here I have a lighter background. So again, you can play around with that, change the wallpaper, go through, change the color coding if you want. I've got a darker wallpaper on the other brain so I can go into options and my preferences and we'll just change the brain's colors. So we'll make the background. Uh, background center is white. We'll make that dark. And top and bottom, we'll give that a blue color. So you can play with that. That doesn't look so well. I'm probably going to be changing that really quickly as well. But you can see that you can go through and change all the components and attributes of the brain before you sync it or zip it up and send it off to your colleague. And I think that's um, everything that I want wanted to cover and share with you today. So Patrick, I'm sure we probably have some questions uh, that have come up during the demo today. Um, is there any specific uh, features or components that uh, we'd like to review in further detail? Yeah, we had a couple of questions. Uh, Sherman, w Sherman would like to know if there's a way to simultaneously select a number of items from search results. Yes, so just as you saw that I did earlier. Now I created, that's a, Simon, a great question and one that's definitely relevant uh, to, today, to today's conversation. You saw earlier I ran a report. So if I, one more time, just say all thought types that are presentations, not many, but I can go up to edit and I can add my report results to the selection. Also, if you've recently done a search, so let's say I do a search for the word power. So you can see there's a few search results that are showing up here, actual individual thoughts. But once again, I can go up to edit and add my search results to the selection. So any thought that showed up in your search result, maybe it had the uh, a document, a Word document, or a web page, whatever the case may be, you can see I've got uh, looks like a few pages of search results here, but it totals 23 individual thoughts. And therefore, I've added those search results into my selection box. And from there, you can go through and again, control click to groom and remove thoughts from that list if you don't want them there, or filter your search results. So say, all right, I don't want all 23 of those thoughts. I just want the actual thought names, not the notes and web attachments. So, okay. There are just six thought names. I'll clear that setting and go up to, once again, edit, add search results. And so just those six thoughts that contain the name power have now been added into my selection box. And I can go in and do my modifications from there. Great. And also uh, related to Search Khalil, also just uh, wrote in with a question on how you can uh, run a second level query, like finding a specific uh, company which employs a specific person, for example? Yes. So there are different ways that you can utilize the reports. I would do that in the reports. Again, you can filter your search results. So I can go through and say, I'm looking for a particular keyword, but only in certain attributes. So let's say you have um, a thought type called company or thought type called company X, and all the people that work for company X have that thought type you can filter your search results that way. So we go into advanced and I can search the word power through thought names, but are the thought type of person, I'll say, people. Say okay. And notice there's only two. So John Powers, he's an account manager. Barbara Powers is a person. She's uh, the CEO, but they both fall under the people thought type. And so therefore they match the, uh, the search query, the, the advanced search query. But you can also do that in reports as well. 
So all these different types of reports. So let's say you're utilizing thought types, thought tags, documents, and you're looking for a particular document that has the thought type urgent that is the thought tag um, company X, whatever the case may be. Then we can go into a custom search result. And here you can see I can accumulate all these different attributes. And for tags, because you can have multiple tags, you can actually turn them on and off. So I'm looking for a particular file that's been modified. Chicago's fine. If it's in London, that's fine. Los Angeles is fine. I'm not looking for anything that's tagged New York. So I click it twice, plus minus. So not New York. If it's flagged as being New York, it's not going to show up in my results. So I can utilize all the different thought tags, link types that I've set up, et cetera to filter out those search results, excuse me, search results. And you can actually save those customized reports as well to run against your data as your data continues to evolve. So today, maybe there's no results that fall into that criteria. Two or three weeks from now, as you continue dumping information into your brain, it's going to show up and something is going to match that criteria and show up in that customized, saved, uh, filtered report. Also, I should specify in search, you can specify that you're only searching under a particular area. So is there anyone that matches those search results under Time Warner? No, there's not. But if I do the same search results under eSolutions Consulting and I go into my operations, HR, uh, let's just go right up to Barbara and I run that search result again. So now I'm searching through um, only under, if I click only under the active thought, you can see that's another way of saying, all right, from this thought, and I believe it only goes five generations down. So this thought, five generations down, does the thought show up there, yes or no? And you're going to get a filtered uh, set of, of results. So a few different ways for you to add additional criteria to the searches in a very, very large, very evolved brain. Great. Uh, and Dave had a question on the uh, super types. He noticed that you had some types that were indented and would like to know how to go about. Yes, that. yes. So you'll notice, um, and actually, since I'm in this area of the brain, that's a perfect example. So uh, Barbara Powers, if I mouse over, I can see that Barbara is an executive. And let's take a look at my thought types here. You can see that executive is indented underneath the people thought. So that is a subtype, or you could say people is a super type of all these different types of people. Um, so if I'm looking for all of my executives, there they are, one, two, three, four, five. That's great. If I'm filtering by all my people, I'll go to my people, and you can see that people includes consultants, directors, engineers, executives, managers, and proofreaders. So um, when I'm filtering my search results or if I'm running a report, all right, show me all of my um, tags that are people, or excuse me, types. So proofreaders, there aren't any. I don't have that one yet. Let's go to thought types. There we go, proofreader. Let's view a report of all thought types. Whoops. Sorry, I'm getting a little uh, click happy here. So again, my reports, all thought types of people. If I can control my mouse. Sorry, my mouse is getting a little wiggly. So there you can see I've got people showing up that are managers, that are executives, etc. So I've got subcategories in my thought types. So now if my mouse will behave properly, I'll create a new uh, subtypes. So let's say um, Anne Taylor reports to uh, Catherine. Let's say Anne is just a temp. And I shouldn't say just a temp. She's currently a temp. So I want to create a thought type called temp. So I'll right click and create that thought type. Type temp. And of course, I can go in and modify. We'll just really quickly say temps are orange. 
And the graphic for a temp, if we go down to people, I'll select just a random person there for a temp. So I can clearly identify all my temps, but I also want temps to show up when I'm filtering by people. So all I'm gonna do is connect temp to people. So there's my people thought type. And now I've just made it a subtype. If I go to my thought types and give this a little more screen real estate, there you can see temp is indented under people. Let's say there's tier one temps and tier two temps. I'll create a new thought type. So tier one is showing up here as its own thought, but if we connect that to temp, there it is in my past thought list, a sub sub thought type so you can go as many different layers down as you'd like here and if eventually something is classified uh, as tier one let's say we create a new person let's say i am tier one so there's me i'm tier one so again in reports if we're filtering by all thought types that are tier one there's just going to be me but if we look at all thought types that are people uh, if I scroll down through the list here, there I am. So I fall under that category as well, as well as falling under temp. So yes, you can nest or subcategorize all of those thought types. Um, very, very helpful in some scenarios, especially when you're running reports. So you can actually further identify and classify your information. Great. Uh, and one more question Khalil had okay. uh, about link types, how you can color them and uh, yes, if you can yes. Maybe quickly cover link types. Absolutely. We didn't focus too much on link types today. So let's say I'm going to be helping with one of my, um, I'll just type in a few letters. There's Harley Davidson. So let's say Harley Davidson is a client. And both John and I, as you can see, are working on the Harley Davidson account. But we have different roles. Let's actually uh, say I got hired up from a temp. I am now thought type manager. So hooray for me. John and I are both managers. Now you also may be wondering why is John highlighted in green right now? That's because John matches a re recent search result. So your search results, if you're view visualizing up in the brain, uh, something that's showing up currently in your search results is being highlighted in green as well. If I just click on this little uh, red uh, circle with the, the hash mark through it, then that clears my search results and he's no longer highlighted in green. So both John and I working on the Harley Davidson account, but John is really the key player. He is the team lead. I am just simply assisting for this account. So whenever he's not available, I can answer any questions and I'm sort of learning the ropes. So I'm going to click on the link between John and Harley. So notice that the link now that I've clicked on it, it's highlighted. I can add notes to a link. So if there's specifically information about a relationship between two thoughts, but it doesn't go on thought A, it doesn't go on thought B, it's about how the two are connected. So let's say John actually used to work at Harley Davidson. We don't need to know that when we're on the John Powers thought. We don't need to know that when we're on the Harley Davidson thought. But the relationship between the two worked for Harley Davidson for eight years. So some further information about who he knows, what his relationship is with Harley Davidson, et cetera. That's just on the note itself. And notice my thought tool tab. If you've got a keen eye, when a link is highlighted, the thought tool tab changes to the link tool tab so we can change attributes. I can color code a link between two thoughts. He's the account manager. So I can really make that link stand out and even add a label. So account manager and, or I can just say the team lead. So you notice I can change it, modify it at any time. I am at, however, just simply a, I'll um, edit this link really quickly by right clicking, another option for you. I'm an assistant. So you can actually identify the relationship between two thoughts. You may have noticed you can also right click on a link and set up a link type. 
So a link type uh, is a uh, link type that you're going to be using over and over and over again. How is that useful? It's going to save you time. Uh, so there you can see team lead was actually already an option. It's with a purple line. So yes, I want to go back and edit this link. I want to change that content. Actually, let's highlight it and remove our color code. So we're back to the default. I right-click on the link between two, and I select an existing link type. So I can set up a new link type. We'll go down to team lead. So the reason why I would want to use the team lead, again, not only it saves me time because that is an existing link type, but I can run a report. Show me all thoughts that are connected via a link type team lead. And there are only four. I've just started using this link type, but you can see Donnie Liu is the team lead for Reach Out Time Warner, John Powers, team lead for Harley Davidson, etc. So a lot of different functionality you can filter in your reports. You can highlight links to add notes and attachments on the links themselves as well. Great, and that covers it. Fantastic. Well, thanks everyone for joining me today. Again, I really did go over a lot of more advanced features of the Brain application. We are recording today, so if you really want to take your time and slow things down and watch how I gathered a grouping of thoughts into the selection box to change their thought type or move them from one area to another or copy them from one brain into a new brain, you can do that with the recording. We'll send everyone that's on the call today a link to that recording, as well as a link to some of the sample brains that I use today. And again, if you're just joining us for the first time and learning about using the brain and want to start with just the basics, join us for a Brain 101. You can do that on our website. Um, as the very bottom of our homepage is linked to sign up at any time, every Friday, Brain 101. We're always happy to hear from you. And both Patrick and I are always available in support as well. So you can send a note into support at thebrain.com and ask any additional questions that you may have. So I'm done gardening on my brain today. It's time to go back to Nature Garden. Spring is here. So uh, Patrick and I are going to get started on our spring gardening, both in our brain and out in the garden itself. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us today. And enjoy your weekend. Bye. Thanks, everyone.